AI is everywhere, and I believe it can be an incredible tool even in business. Just like we have tools that have changed and innovated the way we've done business over the years, whether it's a table saw, a CNC router, or custom software like Cabinet Vision or Mosaic, I believe AI can have the same level of impact that those have if it's done in the correct way. Most people today, are, when they think of AI, they think of ChatGPT and just writing emails and very simple tasks like that. And in this video, I'm going to show you some of that, but I'm more going to focus on what I believe is the future of AI, especially when it comes to small businesses and how you can actually implement it and be okay with releasing a customer-facing chatbot or something similar that's trained on your data. So this is going to be a little bit of a technical video, but hopefully it exposes what's out there and you'll be thinking of use cases as you finish this video. So let's dig into it. So the first thing we think of when we think of AI is ChatGPT. And just right out of the box, this can be an incredibly powerful tool. So let me just paste in a little prompt here. I'm just going to ask it to write an email for me. So I'm going to give it just a little context. I'm a custom cabinet maker called Myron's Custom Cabinets, which is fake. And I want to offer a 20% discount on painted cabinets in June 2025. Write an email. So even without knowing anything about my business, this can do a really good job. And so whether you need an email or you want to update your website, write a more effective header on your website, or maybe you want to update the terms and conditions on your estimates that you send out or a little contract, ChatGPT is an amazing tool for any wording or grammar type of data. And so you can see it did a pretty good job. You know, are you thinking about upgrading your space? Beautiful custom painted cabinets. This is perfect. And we can even take it a step farther. Let's customize this even farther. Let's say um, they must tell me a knock knock joke to get discount. So totally off the wall email here, but you can see how I can fine tune this and keep telling it prompts to get the exact email that I want. And to come up with something like this on your own, you know, not all of us are, are creative, so this gets us a really good head start. And maybe even to take it a step farther, add a clever pun. And there it says knock knock, your 20% discount is here. We're opening the door to big savings, but you have to knock first, that's pretty clever. Okay, so you can see just right out of the box, you can start using this today, but it's only, you can only do so much with just the regular chat GPT. And so here's where I'm going to show you the difference. So, you know, my main job is I train and educate people how to use cabinet vision software. So what if I wanted to ask a very specialized question about cabinet vision? So for example, I'm just going to dig deep in the help topics and I'm going to find a little parameter called R cut. Now it doesn't matter if you don't understand what I'm doing here. The point that we're, illustrating here with AI is that ChatGPT is not going to know specifics about your business information, whatever it is. So in Cabinet Vision, R cut is a parameter that you can add to a route to make it cut on the center of the route line, or the tool would cut inside, or the tool would cut outside. So very specific information. Let's see what ChatGPT says about this. I'm just going to start a new one, and I'm going to paste in my prompt. So I'm going to even tell it I'm using Cabinet Vision software. It's for cabinet makers. And I'm going to say, what system parameter allows me to change the side of a route that the tool runs on? So let's see what it comes up with. OK, here's the danger of a tool like ChatGPT or any AI. It's going to come up with something no matter what you ask it. And a lot of times it will look decent, but like there's no mention of R cut here. It says there's a parameter called cutting side. And so you can see it just, it just makes stuff up. And so to think of like turning like a chat bot or some type of customer support tool loose that is just getting data from anywhere and everywhere, um, it's a little scary. Um, because if, if you want to actually make AI useful in business, it needs to be specific to your business. So I want to show you some alternatives to chat GPT. And just really quick before I do that, I do want to mention one other thing. This is just the user kind of consumer level chat GPT. They do have an API and you can actually do chat GPT assistance where you upload files and train it that way. However, I wasn't as impressed with this as what I'm about to show you. Um, what I found with chat GPT's assistance is it still kind of used too much of its own reasoning and didn't use my documents enough. 
because really I wanted it to use my documents and just use the AI to be able to kind of sort through and determine what the user is looking for. So I didn't have a lot of success with the chat GPT assistance. Now what I did have a lot of success with was something called a vector database. And so think about, you know, in the example I showed earlier with the email, you know, the AI only knew enough of what I included in the prompt. So imagine for me to create a AI based on cabinet visions, you know, inner workings and system parameters, I would have to build a massive prompt. There's no way I could get all of those documents into every prompt. Plus it would be expensive because the more characters, the more tokens you use. So how can we get around that? And that's where this pinecone database comes in. And a vector database literally stores things, you know, it's, I can't, I'm not even going to pretend to understand how a vector database works, but basically it's a really smart and clever way to be able to store text as vector points and it can very quickly retrieve that. So now instead of having to build massive prompts where I'm providing all this context, I can ask questions and it can look it up in my vector database. So very technical, very difficult thing. Um, if you're looking on YouTube for this type of AI, um, there's an interface called RAG um, that you're going to be searching for. So if you search for RAG AI, you're going to see a lot of videos on this topic. So it's mostly going to be done through custom programming, but I found this no-code tool called N8N, and it allowed me to be able to store documents in my Pinecone database and also build a chatbot to retrieve it. For example, in Airtable, I have my system parameters stored here, and you can see RCut is in here. And then I just gave it a little bit of my own reasoning and kind of how I use RCut and what the documentation says. And then in my N8N interface, if I go to add knowledge base to Pinecone, I have it so it reads my Airtable and does all the stuff that it needs to do. And again, this is not a technical video. We can always do a how-to later. This is just to introduce a topic to you that you may have not known beforehand. So anyways, this whole thing here basically stores all of my data into Pinecone. And then here's where the magical stuff happens. Okay, so I have a little automation here that says when a chat message is received, it looks at my AI agent and it's using ChatGPT 4.0 Mini, which is a nice cheap AI agent. So it's using that for kind of the reasoning to figure out what the user is asking but then it's referencing the Pinecone vector store. So compare this to, remember what that question I asked it earlier? Let's just copy this into my chat. So I'm using Cadent Vision software for Cadent Makers. What system parameter allows me to change the side of the route? Now you'll notice it goes out to the AI agent, looks in OpenAI's API, but then it's also referencing my Pinecone vector store. Now if we look at the result, it says in Cadent Vision software, the system parameter that allows you to change the side of the route that the tool runs on is called Arca. Oh, and it gives me the values, and oh, it even gives me a little tip that I need to keep in mind. You know, if I'm using Pocket, Arca may not work. So all of a sudden, this chatbot knows a lot about a very specialized software, about something that ChatGPT could have never answered me. So let's try another one. Um, how can I add? a miter to the top of a board. Okay, so to add a miter to the top of a board, you can use the system parameter MITT. And if I would go out to Cadent Vision, go to the Help Topics, and go to MITT, there it is. And that's exactly correct. So all of a sudden, this chat, this chat bot, you know, I would all, you know, I would be okay with letting people use this because it's actually returning results that are accurate. It's not just making up parameters because it's AI. Um, so that is really incredible. Now, I'm going to show you another example. So I have a course that I created for Cadent Vision. It has over 100 videos, several hours long. And I just made a little chatbot that can basically help the user find a video to watch. If I go back and look at my Airtable, you know, I'm storing all of my videos with the name and category, and then I have the video transcription. And so take that same thing we just looked at, 
if I put my video transcripts into Pinecone and reference that, I can now chat with my videos. So let's look at this example. You know, maybe I want to, let's do something very specific. Like, you know, I don't have a video name for this, but you know, what if I wanted to make that line red? What if I wanted to change my dimension line color? You know, I don't have a video specifically called that. So if the user wasn't sure where to find it, they could chat with this chatbot. So let's just ask it that question. How do I change the dimension colors in Cabinet Vision? And again, same concept. It's retrieving from my Pinecone Vector Store. And it's going to return an answer to change the dimension colors in Cabinet Vision. I recommend checking out the video titled Dimension Styles. And it falls under Creating Customer Presentations. And so if we would go find that, we got Dimension Styles right here. So that's pretty helpful. And it also says you might want to check out the video called Manual Dimensions in CAD. So that right there is very relevant. And I actually added that to my. <laughs> my course page because this is something that's helpful and I believe it's accurate because it's trained on my data. It knows what the videos are about and so as long as it's able to interpret the user's question, it's going to tell them what video to choose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put the link here on this page and also in the description and feel free to go play with this. And again, this what's on this page that I'm going to link to here is just for my course videos. It's not the full Cabinet Vision AI. I'm Honestly, I'm kind of experimenting with that and I might <laughs> release that, but right now I'm just kind of experimenting and you know putting data into it. But I hope this was helpful in maybe seeing some potential use cases for this type of work. And again, you know, I know some programming, sure, but with a tool like N8N and Pinecone and OpenAI, like almost anyone can do this. This is not a super technical, you know, 20 year programmer type of work. Hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know if you think uh, AI can have a place, whether it's customer facing or whether it's internal tools. Um, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on AI and cabinet businesses.